back again. Let me show you our finished Brussels sprouts. Woo, if I can pick them up. Very hot. Woo, crap. All right, I did stir them up after that cheese got good and melted, but this is the finished Brussels sprouts. They look amazing. They smell amazing. I'm gonna put them over here out of the way. We're gonna put them back in the oven on warm for a few minutes until I get finished with the fried steak. So this is the first time I've ever made this dish. I have no idea if it's gonna be good or not. I've got two tablespoons of butter in my skillet. And uh, of course the recipe calls for ghee. I'm gonna post this recipe for you guys when I finish. If you want to wait until a taste test, I would highly recommend because <laughs> I've never tried this dish before, but it essentially is a country fried steak and gravy, keto style. So let's try it out. Guys, I have to apologize. My family is like crazy, having fun. We haven't been together all four of us, um, so they're just having a blast out there on the porch and aggravating the mess out of me. So I apologize for a few minutes ago. Hey, buddy, how are you? Judy, Amy, Donna. Hey, Sarah, Nancy. All right. So I've got two tablespoons of butter. We've got a concoction here. So I've got pork rinds. I took about two cups of pork rinds and I smashed up the pork rinds with my hands and we added Parmesan cheese, so crushed Parmesan. We added a teaspoon of paprika and a teaspoon of garlic powder. I've got two eggs uh, with about uh, two tablespoons of heavy cream. And we just mix that together and now we're gonna take these steaks and we're gonna dip them in the pork rind first on both sides. And then we're going to dip it in the egg mixture really quick. Ooh, I don't know if that's gonna work good. All right, and then we're gonna go into the next bowl of pork rinds. Come in. Somebody's, hey, at least somebody's here in a Jeep. I have no idea who they are. And then we're gonna put them into the skillet. So we're gonna fry these for about two minutes on each side. Who is that? We're dipping it into the crust mixture twice. I have no idea who's at the house. All right, and then we're gonna put it into the butter. Now the recipe calls for ghee. We're gonna fry this for about two minutes on each side. I think I got room for one more. Hopefully I've got enough of the pork rind mixture because the recipe is for four and I'm cooking eight because I have my whole family here. Pork rind mixture, egg, and then the next bowl of pork rinds. So again, we crushed up about a cup of pork rinds or two cups because I'm doing double in the recipe. We added paprika and garlic powder, and then we're mixing it both times, once and then in the egg, and then once again. I've got it on the butter for about two minutes. This is summer here. All right, and then we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna cook these first three, and then I'm gonna move on to the gravy so y'all can see the gravy recipe. And then we're gonna get this on a plate for my family. So my hands are really nasty. Look, this is the first time I've made my kitchen like completely dirty. It is a mess in here. Who is that, Haley? Somebody trying to sell something? Fire What's he want? He's trying to sell something? Yeah. Fire department's here trying to sell something. All right. And Ricky does not need to talk to him right now. <laughs> All right, I don't know for sure if I'm gonna have enough of this pork rind mixture, so that's not good. Let me pour a little bit of these pork rinds. And go ahead and make some more up while this is frying. This is a trial run. I've never made this recipe before, so we just take the pork rinds and crush them up with our hands. You can put them in a chopper if you wanted to. I'm in complete mess in the kitchen. What are you guys doing for dinner tonight? I want you to kind of see how we test things in the kitchen. Just tell him that, um, I you can. I'm, not I'm, I'm cooking. Just tell him that we don't have any cash for this, that he'll have to come back another, or ask him if he can leave a number with us, and I'll call him when I'm at work tomorrow. Okay. Tell him I'm cooking and your dad don't have any cash. Your dad's busy. No, he's cooking. Just tell him that your dad's busy, and I'm cooking. So I'm not coming out there. My daughter's too nice. She can't tell a salesman no. Okay. I am a salesman. I can do it. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're just mixing this up. This is not going as well as the first batch because I'm trying to do it in a fast hurry. I probably need to flip these over. Hopefully they're not sticking. I have a, two tablespoons of butter. Dang, the whole darn thing come off. I'm not gonna flip the other ones. Darn it. Trial run. <laughs> I'll let you guys know if this is any good or not. It sounds really good in the recipe. It doesn't call for very many things. 
And I want to do it on a Sunday because, of course, there's more to it than just a, a, like a normal fast than I do. There's a little bit more prep into this one. I'm making a mess. Lord of mercy, my husband's going to be so mad at me because <laughs> he usually cleans up behind me. Too hard. Can you give you a number? Yeah. All right, we're going to add a little paprika to it. I better do it to the same. I'll add some garlic powder to it. I better not get too crazy. All right, we're going to mix it up. I'm trying to make sure I have enough crust because we have about five more of these to make. <laughs> Hopefully this is going to be good or my family's going to run out and get pizza while I eat it. <laughs> These are hard. What are you guys doing for dinner tonight if you didn't tell me earlier in video? Hey, Tammy and Johnny, Brittany. I think I see Christina on there. All right, so I'm not sure if this is going to work out really good in this skillet. I probably should have used one of my better nonstick skillets. But we're going to flip this over and hopefully all the crust won't fall off of this one. It didn't. It's all right. This one, dang it, how do I keep the crust on? Trial and error, I reckon. I guess I didn't cook it long enough. We'll check out this and see how it goes. Let me stick this one over. Definitely use a good nonstick skillet. <laughs> Let's see. Janet, how are you? Let's see, hey Alex Dove, I hope you guys are safe on your way home. I think you are coming home today. I know, Sarah. <laughs> ah, let's see. Hey, Alicia, how are you? So we're doing a trial run recipe. I've never made this before, but I'm excited to give it a try. It's a country fried steak and gravy. I have no idea if it's going to turn out good or not. We're doing it. And like I said, my family might have to order some pizza or eat a frozen pizza if it doesn't turn out good, but I will eat it no matter what. All right, we're going to flip this over. Oh, it actually looks pretty good, y'all. Let me see if I can flip this one without losing the crust. Nope, it's not ready yet. Let me show you what it looks like so far. My hands are filthy. Looks like a country fried steak, don't it? We'll see what happens. <laughs> so the pork rind or the steak, the, uh, the crust is pork rinds. We just crushed with our hands. We added some Parmesan cheese, which I just forgot to add some more Parmesan cheese to this one. So Parmesan cheese, some paprika and garlic powder. And we're going to dip it in the crust and then in the egg and then in the other side of the crust. So it's really crusted good. Hopefully it'll stay on there this time I'll flip it. Make sure you have a good amount of butter or grease or whatever you're going to cook it with so it doesn't stick and use a really good nonstick skillet. I learned that already. All right, I'm going to try to flip this over. We want to get these good and cooked. We are frying them. So I'm not putting these into the oven. We're actually going to be done with it once it's done here cooking. So these are cube steaks. Cube steaks shouldn't take long to cook. Because they're pretty thin. Now, these are looking pretty decent. I wish the crust would have stayed on them better, but I got another batch to go through, so we'll find out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start making the gravy so you can see what I'm doing. I've got four ounces of softened cream cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on medium heat. If I can figure out how to use my oven. I'm gonna put it on medium heat. And we're gonna let that uh, cook down just a second, that uh, cream cheese. It isn't a good nonstick skillet. Maybe I'll do a different skillet this time. Let me get a new skillet. Lord, I got a mess. This is a better nonstick, so I think I'm going to add some butter to it and be ready to move, uh, do a different pan at this time. I'm going to go ahead and start melting some butter. We'll get this old skillet out of the way. Try this new one. Just got to wait on these two steaks to cook. My little kitchen timer for sure did not ding. Did y'all hear it ding? I think I'll just, uh, I think I'll just time it myself with my head. <laughs> All right, those Brussels sprouts look amazing. They smell delicious. I'm supposed to put them back in the oven just on warm so they don't get cold while we're waiting on this. I'm scared to keep flipping them because I'm scared the crust is gonna fall off. I gotta flip them because, oh man, that one is definitely falling off. So this batch is not turning out the greatest. I'll definitely eat this one and give my family the better looking ones. I think my family is, Haley came in the house, and I think they're calling and telling her to come back outside. They must have aggravated her. She's the only girl since I'm in here. <laughs> All right, so we're making this uh, gravy. 
We're melting four ounces of softened cream cheese. Let me get a little paper towel. This is such a mess in the kitchen. I've never had this. It's been a long time since I've made this mess. Y'all can't see it from that angle. But look at this mess. My husband's going to kill me. <laughs> he usually always helps me clean up. Uh, so he's, he's not going to be happy about the mess. <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Hey, Steve. How are you? All right, Victoria. I see Pippa on here. Hey, Allison. Cheryl. How are you guys doing? Patty, what are y'all doing for dinner tonight? This is something new. I have no clue if it's going to turn out good. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to try it. You have to try things new, otherwise you never know, right? But this is a mess. So next time I definitely will not have the kids aggravating me from behind so I can actually get this done right in first. So I've got it on medium heat. You would think cube steak would cook a lot faster than this, but I still see blood. So we're just frying these. And I'm going to go ahead and start making my gravy. So I'm trying to melt down about four ounces of softened cream cheese. And I'm just going to keep flipping these even though the crust is going to fall off. The crust is 100% falling off one steak. Dang it. Fell off the second steak. I'm fixing to move to a better skillet that's more, um, ow, that's more, uh, it's going to be better for a nonstick. Dang. These first packets is not pretty. I like pretty food. <laughs> hey, Lee, how are you? So I like to serve pretty dishes. This one is not going to be pretty. Not this first batch anyway. The second batch I'm going to try harder at. <laughs> this cream cheese is definitely not wanting to melt down. Let me get a spoon. Oh yeah, it's coming. It's softening down. So I've got four ounces of cream cheese and we're going to add uh, some minced onion. So you can use like minced onion that you mince up yourself or you can use the minced onion seasoning. That's what I'm going to do. We're also going to add some garlic powder to this to the gravy, and we're going to add some beef broth. So right now we're just melting down the cream cheese. You want to get it good and melted. And this steak needs to hurry up so I can put my other batch in and make a pretty batch. Dang, y'all. I'm disappointed. I like my food to be pretty. The next batch is going to be better. I can already tell. Dang it. I think I'm just, I started flipping it too early is what happened. <laughs> it was really pretty. I can tell you right now, my son's going to come in the kitchen and he's going to be like, um, I think I'll go home and eat. Because <laughs> he is so picky. He is so picky. All right, what are y'all doing for dinner tonight? You may not even want to stay on here and watch this. I didn't know it was going to take this long. I thought it would be in and out. So the, the cream cheese is melting. You'll see it's melting down just a little bit. We want to get it good and melted, though. I'm going to turn down really low heat as soon as we get it going good. So I've never made gravy with cream cheese. So we are doing keto style fried steak and gravy. So we're gonna do what it says and see how it turns out. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my seasonings. I've got a fourth cup of minced garlic, not minced garlic, I'm sorry, a fourth cup of minced onion. I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Probably put the top on it so I don't pour the whole thing in there. Ooh, that looks good. A little salt and pepper as always. And of course we salt and peppered the meat. I just want to make sure I'm stirring this cream cheese so it don't burn in the skillet. And then we're going to start slowly whisking in some beef broth. About a third, about third cup. You can do a third cup to a half a cup. Let me get this out of the way. Let me get a little whisk. Really, I get this good and melted, though. You don't want to put any liquid in there until it's good and melted. Coming down. Alright, so I don't know if you guys can see this at all. Hey Anna, how are you, girl? Alright, we're gonna do a third cup of beef broth, just a little bit at a time. We're gonna whisk it in. I think this will be pretty decent, y'all. I may go ahead and get pizza on the line. I'll eat this by myself. <laughs> we're just whisking in just a little bit of broth at a time. And this is gonna be our keto steak gravy. This may be the first meal I've cooked that I tell y'all not to eat. We'll see. <laughs> so we're just whisking in this gravy, getting all the all the ingredients together. Again, it was a third cup of beef broth with four ounces of really soft cream cheese, garlic powder, and minced onion. Now that this recipe is for four pieces of steak. I'm actually cooking eight. 
But I know my family's going to be really picky with this, so who knows if they're going to eat it. They've never tried it before, so I mean. All right, let me see if I can flip over this steak again. One piece is looking okay. The rest of them, the complete, all the crust come off. Dang it. I should have known not to use this skillet. I'm going to put this one out of the way. Yeah. So all I'm going to crust come off this. Makes me very angry. Ow. Got this one fat piece left. Not done. So all of my crust is in the darn pan. I can't see it. All of my crust is in the pan. Every bit of it fell off. <laughs> so we're going to try a second batch with a better non-stick skillet. We'll get this out of the way and move it on back here. So we're going to melt some more butter. The recipe calls for ghee. I don't know if that's the secret to this or not, but I didn't have any ghee. Let me get this out of the way here. Talk about disappointing. All right, we're going to try it again, though. So I'm just mixing up this gravy for the uh, steak. I'll make sure it's good and creamy. We're melting this second two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. Maybe that'll help. So let me show you how we're making the crust for this steak and hopefully it'll stay on this time. <laughs> we're taking some cube steak that I did salt and pepper. We're gonna dip it in a pork rind mixture that's pork rinds, Parmesan cheese, paprika, and garlic powder. Then we're gonna dip it into an egg mix, eggs and heavy cream. I'm gonna get an egg on it. And then we're going to dip it into a second batch of pork rinds. This time I'll put it in the skillet and I'm not going to rush it. I'm just going to let it cook so it doesn't stick and fall off. Yeah, my family's going to be so picky. They're not going to eat this. I'm going to be mad if they don't too. <laughs> All right, and then we'll do another one. I'm not sure why I want you to double coat the pork rind mixture, but that's what we're doing. That's what it calls for, it's what we're doing. It looks like I run out again. So every single recipe that calls for like a pork rind crust, I never have enough. I think they always underestimate the amount of pork rind mix you need. So either that or maybe I'm putting way too much and that's why it's sticking, who knows. All right, we're gonna put this into the skillet. I have my skillet on medium heat and I'm gonna let it cook. I'm not gonna mess with it this time. Hopefully my crust won't fall off. <laughs> let me wash my hands again. over here. Have you guys ever tried this recipe before? I got it off Pinterest. It sounded really yummy, so I thought we'll give it a try. Maybe it's not going to be as good as I thought it was. We'll see. Alright, we're going to let this cook. I'm not going to rush it. I definitely need more pork rind mixture. So we're going to mix up pork rinds, Parmesan cheese, paprika, and garlic powder. You can use a chopper if you want to, or you can just do it with your hands like I'm doing. If you do it with your hands, they turn into bigger chunks of pork rind, which is fine unless you want to take a lot of time to crunch it up really small. I prefer them to be really small, but some of them are really hard, so I just kind of push them off to the side. Hey, Justin! Justin's not going to eat this, I can tell y'all right now. So I'm going to go ahead and give him some advice to call him for his pizza. Teaspoon. I'm not 
use a lot of pork rinds. So this recipe does not give you all the enough ingredients. Make sure you use plenty. We have two tablespoons of butter. What we're doing is just frying these uh, steaks over there on the skillet. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I'll fix that get off here and finish this up. It's a mess. I'll let you know if it's worth the trouble. It's really not trouble, it's just uh, I keep running out of pork rind mix. Yeah, I've had a really good skillet that's non-stick, that's for sure, I found that out. And normally I do my trial and errors without you, <laughs> so that I can show you next time that it's really easy and delicious. I'm not 100% certain that we'll do this again unless it absolutely tastes delicious. So I never do my trial and errors with you guys on the phone, so I wanted to show you, I'm just like everybody else, <laughs> we try something new and it either is good or it fails. All right, let me clean my hands and flip these steaks. Some of you guys might have some suggestions of how I could do this better or easier. All right, I'm gonna take this gravy off. I'm gonna add a little bit, a little bit of beef broth to the gravy. Definitely need some more. Salt and pepper to the gravy. And then turn that heat down to really low. We wanna simmer this really, really low. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can flip these and the crust stay on. Let's cross our fingers. I hope I'm not doing it too early again. Ooh, yes, now this batch is going to be prettier. The nonstick skillet is the secret. So let me show you these. Really pretty. <laughs> going to make sure you have a good nonstick skillet. Alright, that was my error a while ago. I'm going to go ahead and put another one on. I think I have one for another one. So, pork rind. Egg mix. My son's not looking at me like, well, I don't know why I'm going to you inviting me over here to eat this. He doesn't like pork rinds, so I'm not going to tell him there's pork rinds in it. <laughs> That's what he'll say too. He'll like, say, you know I don't like pork rinds. Right, I'm adding the second one or third one in the skillet. Ooh, that's hot. All right, hopefully this second batch is going to be turned out so much better. All right, guys, any questions? I'm sure y'all have lots of suggestions to make this much easier than I made it. But I want you to see the real life keto queen in the kitchen, trial and error, trying to find something new. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. If I can help you in any way, just send me a message. Bye.